Today we're going to mount up a set of antlers using the Record Keeper model. It's our latest in the line. Um, this particular model is designed for the people that just can't see themselves removing the antlers from the skull plate or it's, it's just a trophy class animal that they want to retain that trophy book quality and they, they want to keep it in the book. So this particular model utilizes that original skull plate and we'll show you how to mount that up. We'll get started right now. Today we're going to mount this setup which it's, it came from a portion of uh, Montana where the mule deer and whitetail cross over and I have no idea if it's, a, if it's a hybrid or it's just a unique mule deer or what, but it sure has some great characteristics um, and so we're going to mount, mount that up and keep it on the original skull plate and uh, we'll show you how that works. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, to mount this set up, the best way to do it, we're going to first cut off the excess skull material to make it fit in the notch correctly. The best way to do it, which I found works best for me, take it to the edge of a table, your workbench, lay it to where the antlers lay flat. You'll notice there'll be a section back here where it'll want to lay flat right towards the base section and clamp it into place. Use your sawzall or, or a hacksaw or anything. Use the front the burrs on each side and cut directly vertical at a 90 degree angle towards the bench. Just use the burrs as, as a line of guide and don't cut through them. Just use that as the front, your front area. Okay, now we have that cut made. We're going to want to cut exactly a 90 degree angle going back along the bottom of the burrs. So we'll go ahead and hold the antlers in this position flat with the surface you just cut. And we'll cut off, right using the burr again as our line, we'll go ahead and cut the back off. Okay, now we have them cut. It's a 90 degree to the front of the burr, it's a 90 degree to the back of the burrs. Carefully not to cut the burrs themselves off. Now, the next step will be to mount it to the top section. As you can see, it fits pretty darn nice right into the top of that piece, right into the notch. It fits pretty nice. So we're going to go ahead and drill through the bottom, and I'll show you that a close-up of that. And you place it, your antlers and skull plate into the notch, making sure it's evenly spaced. Nice and snug. Take an eighth inch drill bit and go ahead and drill through the mounting holes all the way through the skull plate. Okay, your kit comes with some number 10 by one and a quarter inch screws, so we'll go ahead and mount the section the top section to the skull plate. Go ahead and hold it in there. Use your hole you just drilled. Now we've got it mounted to the top section and we're going to start applying the epoxy putty to finish this transition out. We want to smooth that out, make it real nice and then we'll have to put the, uh, the suture back in the top of the bone. We'll be using the, once we get the epoxy putty and I'll show you how to do that, but we'll just be tying this line in here, this is suture line in the skull and bringing it back and making an imaginary one in the fresh epoxy putty. So let's uh, go ahead and mount this to the bottom section. Again, you use the screws that this, uh, this kit comes supplied with, number 6 by 5 eighths. So go ahead and flip this over. Snug them down. You just want to take the play out of the two pieces. You don't want to twerk it down and cause it to get out of shape or anything like that. Just, just snug it down. Grab the other one and install it. Okay, now we have it all assembled. The next step would be to blend this portion in with some epoxy putty. Your kit comes in several out. applications. Go ahead and uh, start with about a one inch piece. Cut it off. Um, all you have to do to mix this is knead it between your fingers. I like to go ahead and a little bit, add a little bit of water to my fingers just so it doesn't stick and it helps just really work together nice, make a nice creamy putty. Just mix it really well. That's the key. You don't want to have any unmixed portion that's going to take longer to dry or cure. 
So go ahead and mix it up real good. And then we're going to push it around all the joints on the skull. We're going to push it in all the areas where we uh, need to blend in. So we're going to start by pushing it in. You don't want to put it all over the place to start with. First you just want to get the main areas that, you're, that you know you have to hit. The more uh, transition area you make, the more you're going to have to paint later on. So I'd like to work it in and make sure I'm going to have a nice solid nice solid fixture. Any play left over from the, putting the screws in or, or uh, not a perfect fit, no reason to glue it or anything. This epoxy putty will do everything that any kind of glue or, or adhesive would okay. do. Right about there is pretty good for the first set. We're blending it in and we're starting the process. So go ahead and let this set up. Take a few minutes. 15-20 minutes we'll come back and we'll mix up another about a one inch piece of the epoxy putty and uh, we'll go ahead and finish it out, blend it up nice and the next time We'll go ahead and put the suture in over the portion of the new epoxy right. putty. Blunt end on it, and I'm just going to go ahead and keep the tip wet, and go ahead and draw that in. And it might take several times to get this exactly right. Just keep watching the clock, because you only have about 15 minutes to work with this epoxy putty before it, it uh, cures. So go ahead and get it through here. Get the front to the top of the skull. Once you get the top of the skull, the suture is split and go down each side. So we'll go ahead and get the top, we'll stop, and then we'll turn it around and we'll get the back section. I've already started to put these in, so you can see what I'm doing. But uh, let me give you a close up. Okay, once we get the top of the skull from the front, now it splits into two and cuts down diagonally across the back of the skull. So go ahead and draw these in. And like I said, if you do it a couple times and you smooth it out with your fingers, you might fill some of these back in. And just go ahead and clean them back up by moistening your, your pencil or your uh, nail or whatever you're using and go ahead and follow that suture line and run it back out. Okay, continue to work it, get it all smoothed out. Any little high spots, really work around the pedicle area, make sure you got any any high spots taken care of. Really work it nice and smooth. These areas here with the little divots here in the skull where the nerves come out through the hole from the top of the skull. Keep putting those in. They need to follow up up the top of the forehead a little bit to really make it look natural. Just keep working it. Work it. This is starting to go off. This is starting to get hard. So I, I need to uh, finish, finish with what I'm doing here. And then we'll let it cure the rest of the way. Okay, now it's totally cured. Everything looks pretty good. I was just checking it out, and I, I have a couple little things that I missed before it's set up. Um, the only thing I didn't give you in your kit that you're going to need is possibly, like I need right now, is some sandpaper. 150 grit. You, you don't necessarily need it to do a real nice job, but if you find the imperfection that you just don't like, and, or it doesn't quite make the transition smooth enough, just go ahead and sand it. I got a little spot over here that I don't like too much. It's just got a little bump that I missed. So I'm going to sand that out. Um, this material sands very easy. Uh, it's very strong, sands good, paints well, it's a, it's a great little material. And you have about roughly half your stick left after this. What I've done here, I have about half the stick left. So um, if you have to go back through, do some more blending, you have plenty of material. It's, it's a real good stuff and you can use it around the house as well. Okay, I've gone ahead and sanded up any little imperfections that I had. I want to make sure I get a, I'm just going to brush this off, you can use a rag or whatever, make sure there's no grit from the sandpaper or any dust. And we'll be ready to paint this. One thing I didn't mention about this epoxy putty also is if you have a broken point, a broken brow tine, anything that happens by repairing that point, and it can take wood stain, which I like to use like a walnut color to actually, uh, you know, blend it in. So it works for other things also. So go ahead and... Uh, Try those out. Touch that paint and uh, shake it up really well for a minute or so. All mixed up good. You want to apply this with long overlapping strokes. So first get this center section, get that suture covered. And it generally takes two coats to get this done to where you really like it. But go ahead and uh, fill that suture up good. Now start working it out from that with long strokes. Just keep going back and forth, keeping it wet. You don't want to let it dry, otherwise start pulling. And we'll go back and forth. Okay. 
And be careful around the base of the antlers. We don't want to get the burrs, we don't want to get paint up in the burr. Just want to barely go around it. Like I said, it take about two coats to get this covered real nice. Go ahead and get those sutures good. Okay, now we can just go ahead and keep filling it up. Like I said, be careful with the birds. You don't want to get paint on this on the actual antler itself. Well, we're waiting for this to dry. Here's one thing I'd like to I'd like to do is show you. This is a just a white latex adhesive caulk, and um, one step that is optional. It's something you can do if you like. I, I personally like to do it. Is where the pieces of the uh, the skull join together. If there's any gaps or anything that I don't like, or around the antler pedicles, um, anything that just doesn't look quite right, you want to fill a little gap, then this uh, a white latex caulk works really good. Just go ahead and apply it in along the joints here. Any place that you have an imperfection, something that you don't like, go ahead and put it in there. Just wipe off the excess. It'll dry a nice white, flat white finish just like your skull. And, uh, it really finishes out your mountain ice. Like I said, it's optional, but it, it sure uh, just puts that extra detail to it. About an hour, and I've just started applying the uh, the final coat. So you want to let it dry about an hour between coats. That way, you get the best coverage. If you try to do it too quickly, it'll just uh, it won't cover as well. It'll start softening up the paint you just went over and, and ba basically pulling it off the material you just painted. So go ahead and give it an hour, uh, hour plus per coat and then you can keep putting wet coats on let it dry and generally two coats is going to be enough um, you know the more coat you got plenty of paint you could actually paint the whole skull if you wanted to it's uh, and every one where you want to blend it in you can blend it in just in the middle of the forehead you can blend it into the first suture line across the top of the skull there you can come all the way down to the nose wherever it seems to work best for you is, is fine you got plenty of paint um, just go ahead and get it covered a second time with a nice wet coat and you should be ready to hang it. Hi, as you can see our skull dried up real nice, it was flattened down a nice bone, bone finish and it looks, looks real good, came out nice. Um, between our record keeper model, the skull master and the shed spreader, we have pretty much all your antler mounting needs taken care of. So I appreciate your interest in mountain mic reproduction products and good luck out there. Look for our new product coming soon which is the uh, Real Tree model APG finish. It's a, a really attractive way to mount your antlers and it really stands out, gives it a different look, and I think every trophy room would definitely uh, benefit from having these one of these hanging on your wall. I put one in mine and I really like it. So look for these products coming. Our through. slogan that uh, Ralph of Archer's Choice came up with no beetles, no boiling, no mess. I think that really says it. It's a, it's a simple way of getting the message across that our products are easy to use. They're clean, they're cost effective, and uh, it just you can you can enjoy your trophy really quickly and it'll make let memories last a lifetime. They're built very well, they'll last for many, many years. So thanks again for your interest in Mountain Mike Reproductions, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.